All right, welcome to the third and final video in this K7000 repair series of three. Uh, this is the third one of the lot of three that was sent to me, so let's take the note out and see what we got. This came out of an NBA Jam. NBA Jam. And the note says, Working. Has lines on the screen. Test first to verify this is correct. Uh, tested nothing else. Maybe just needs caps. Uh, okay. Well, if it's working, that cuts our work down a bit. But let's take a look. Immediately, I noticed that the someone's done some type of work to this because the uh, cover plate for the focus connection is missing. It's not on the wire. Let's get all of this loose here and uncongested. Okay, uh, it's not on the wire to the flyback, so someone has done some work to this. Um, we got all of our neck transistors are somewhat evenly spaced. I don't see any broken pots, so that's good. All right, the resistor here, the coating has come off. It's gotten so hot over the years that the coating has just flicked off. You can see it's kind of happening to this one, so that's common. Uh, but we can test it just to verify. I'm sure it's good. They should be somewhere around 6.5k or 7k if memory calls, or if, if memory serves, if I can recall correctly. <laughs> it's still early for me. Uh, all right, so let's go to ohms. We can test these resistors here. Let's test the first one. Yep, 7k. Um, let's go. Okay, yeah, 7K, and the suspect one, 7K. So, they're good, okay. Yeah, this just, this is common. You'll see it quite often on this, these red uh, re wire around res resistors here. <clears throat> All right, so let's, we can put our meter away. I just wanted to verify that while I had a chance here. All right, okay, let's move on to the, well, remote board here. Um, I don't see any broken pots. It's very important to inspect this to make sure there's no, no if you like, let's say your vertical size pot was broken and you turned this on, it would be collapsed and you'd probably take out your vertical IC. So you always want to inspect the pots to make sure that they aren't broken. And of course, we'll inspect to make sure there's no broken wires here coming off the chassis for the remote harness. They don't appear anything to be broken. So let's grab ourselves. Uh, zip tie here and put the zip tie on here like I always do to put the strain relief on here and not on the wires when you're moving the chassis around. I highly recommend doing that because even if the pots are good and the wires break off of here it'll be the same as if the pot was broken and you'll end up with collapse or some other type of detrimental disaster. Okay so that's good. So we'll proceed on here. And the chassis appears to be complete, but I already see one problem is that it's all original. Original white knob flyback, and it's cracked in a bunch of spots, of course. Original caps, but I can already tell that uh, this cap here is bulging slightly. I don't know if you can tell, but it's bul very slightly bulging, so that's probably problem number one. Uh, well, it's relatively clean. It's got a layer of dust on it, but I'm not going to wash this one because it doesn't really necessarily need to be washed. It's You can see it's not that bad. I don't think it really is in need of a wash. It's just slightly dusty, so not too bad. I don't see anything initially. D18 is intact. Uh, C36 is the original, another one here with the original four post, um, four leg, four post, C36 like the other two in the previous two all three of these had the four posts because they're all all three of these were the early run of 1986 You can tell the early runs of these K7000s because the white knob flybacks are almost ex exclusive to the first runs which are 86 uh, the black knob flybacks were later like 1990 and so so these were these were the workhorse of the arcade industry for a good four years until they changed and redesigned it to the black knob flyback, and those ones say 1990 on them, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, but yeah, it appears to be complete. I don't see anything missing. Some mm. odd ground wire here. Mm, the H hole pod is intact. 50, 60 hertz pods intact. All right, let's take a look at the back. Our B plus resistor secure. Um, yeah, relatively clean. Uh, again, third time in a row. D10 is on the back side. <laughs> so I don't understand. I, I don't think the person that sent me the, these chassis did this. I don't understand why for the third time in a row someone has taken D10 off the top of the board and put it on the back. Now if this was working originally there would have been no need to do that. So we'll have to fix this again. I think I ran out of D10 because I had to do the they cut the legs and soldered it to the back and the legs were too short to get put back in from the top. So I think I'm actually out of D10s. Uh, nope, I got one. I got this empty um, donor chassis here and I got a D10 sitting right here so we'll steal that one. Okay, that works out. Um, otherwise... Yeah, here's that mod for the width again. I mentioned this in the part one and two. If your image is super wide and you can't adjust it in, no matter what you do, it will not adjust in. It's just too wide. Make sure someone hasn't removed this uh, capacitor because that's the factory mod that needs to be there. Um, if you have that problem, if you if you are missing, if you get a chassis where this capacitor is not installed, and you don't and you do not have a width problem, the width is just fine. You can adjust it the way it needs to be then you don't need to put this cap in here, then your image will be too small. Uh, this is only to compensate for that issue on the earlier versions of the of the K7000 here. Um, but yeah, it's remar remarkably clean. Of course, it's got some flux here in this area, and it's, it's uh, kind of discolored, but I think someone's been doing some work and some reflow, because some of the stuff has been reflowed. And we can actually look at uh, this resistor here. I think it's R... What is this? R... 60. I don't think that's correct. I think it's, oh, it's R101. I always forget. This resistor right here is uh, these two contacts, this contact here, and let's zoom in a bit. So that resistor is notorious for getting loose connections, and it's this post here to this post across here. You can see it through the hole there. It's this one and this one. And it looks like someone has done some reflow on this, and they've, they've bunched up the trace. Uh, come on, there we go, and there we went. All right, you can see that the trace is kind of bunched up there. It's very odd looking, like someone had shoved, like they loosened up the solder and they shoved the the loose pad over and it and it creased up the trace. But we'll take care of that. For now, we're just going to actually turn it on and see if it works, so we can see what it looks like prior, and then. Uh, see what it looks like after I do the repairs and the rebuild. So it's advertised as working. I do see one slightly bulging cap, so obviously that's going to be a problem. The flyback is cracked in a number of places. Of course, they all are. You won't find a white knob flyback that's not cracked. But just because it's cracked doesn't mean it's bad. Um, but it's just like a ticking time bomb. So you can see that it's cracked across here. If we get rid of some of that, it's cracked this is a crack here, there's a crack along here, it's cracked down here by the screen pot all the way across, so that's kind of dangerous. Um, it's cracked across the side here, all along here. So it's, uh, I'm surprised it's still holding itself, but apparently it is. Just like the chassis in part two where I had a white knob flyback, I, I believe it did. Yeah, it did, and it, it was cracked as well, but it was, it had a pinhole. There was a pinhole on the side here, and I thought it was arcing out of that pinhole, but it turns out that it wasn't, so... Anyway, yeah, okay, well, it appears to pass visual inspection, so I guess we'll get it on a tube and fire it up and see what it looks like before, and then we'll do our cap kit and fly back and reflow and rework and everything, and then see how it turns out afterwards, so stand by. Okay, all hooked up, ready to go. Let's turn it on. A, see if it turns on, and B, what it looks like. Well, it does turn on. 
what do we get? Well, that's odd. We've got the collapse at the bottom due to the 50-60 hertz pot, but I've never seen this before. I've never seen a line through. That's that's not supposed to be there. That should be, you know, obviously up there at the top. Whoa. Yeah, this is some weird stuff happening here. Um, let's... Hmm, yep, let's see if tweaking the 50-60 hertz pot does anything. I need access. Give me a second here. Uh... Okay, yeah, it's just the 50-60 hertz because you can see how the insert coins is flipped over on itself. So we'll adjust our 50-60 hertz because that may be what he's talking about with lines in the screen or weird lines. Yeah, look at where the credit is. <laughs> it's just, it's folded over on itself. Um, no, 50-60 hertz pot fixes the bottom side. So right about there. So that's where the 50-60 hertz pot needs to be set. That fixed the fold over on the bottom. But we still have severe fold over on the top, and I'm sure it has to do with that cap that's bulging or some other bad caps. So it has a really good image the way that it is, but it looks like we need to do the cap kit obviously because of the fold over. So here's what it looks like before uh, great picture, great image, except for the fold over. So let's get it rebuilt, uh, flyback caps, reflow, inspection, and see how it turns out afterwards. So here's the before, and let's see how it looks after. Okay, so it's all rebuilt, ready to go. Uh, full cap kit, including filter cap, new flyback, and because this cap is missing on the focus for the neck, I went ahead and just zip tied this together. So the strain will be at the zip tie and not on the connection and break it off at, at some point. But I did not include the main uh, dag ground in with the zip tie, so it has the ability to reach where it needs to go. So it should be okay. I uh, got the C204 changed as well. So everything should be ready to go. I got the back side all cleaned up as well. Got the full reflow done and the rework complete. Uh, this pad there on R104, I always forget, R101, turned out, turned out to be just absolutely demolished and it was barely hanging on so I was able to just um, solder it over to the next point on the trace like I normally do. So, But yep, got this cleaned up as best as I could or as best as it needs to be and uh, should be ready to go here is all of the original caps and the original flyback and I got D10 also that's the old D10 I got the D10 replacement installed right there on the top the way it should be and this there was one this cap this cap right there was a bit leaky as you can see uh, and then the cap next to it which was this guy it was actually the one that was slightly bulging and you can see when I try and set it down on the on the bench here how it wobbles around yeah compared to one that's not yeah, it wobbles a bit but that's because of the <laughs> let's try a different one <laughs> this may not be a good example but you can see how this one doesn't wobble around when I move it this one here wobbles around so yep, so very slightly bulging, so that may have been our issue. This cap here, and then this one that was leaking. So let's get on the tube and see how it, the after image looks. Stand by one moment. Well, all hooked up. Uh, anode neck yoke ground and video. We got power, we got our neck, or I'm sorry, our uh, remote board hooked up. So we're all ready to go. Um, let's find out how it works. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, we got power, so that's step one. Uh, we'll begin by turning black level all the way down, contrast all the way down. And since it's a new flyback, we'll turn up the flyback until we get our raster lines, which are oh, right there. Turn it back down until they just go away, roughly there. And then we'll turn our black level and contrast back up to desired level. And hey, no more fold over. Hot diggity. Vertical size we need to adjust. Alright, so yeah, there you go. 
That's pretty darn good. Cap kit and a full rebuild fixed the issue. Get this on the tripod and do some adjustments. Angle that. Alright, so it's out of focus slightly, of course, because it's a new flyback. Surprised it's not out of focus more than that. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, contrast is too high. Down a bit. Brightness. Um, brightness should be about there. Yeah, uh, each position. Uh, do I want to adjust the... Uh, I'm not going to really worry about... Like I say, this chassis and all the rest of them, they're not staying on this tube. This is the, my test tube. So I don't really worry too much about colors and screen position because it's going to be, have to be uh, readjusted when it gets to its final destination. But there you go. I'm fixed. No more issue. It was just needed caps and a good rebuild. So yeah, got lucky on this one. Nice, easy, quick repair. Um, they're not always this way, as we know. But this turned out, turned out to be fairly easy and quick. So yeah, um, another success. So, uh, yeah, chalk this, chalk this up to another success. I'll leave it running for a couple of hours like I normally do. And if it's going to explode, it's going to explode in a couple of hours. It's not going to take forever. Uh, some people do 24 hours. Some people do 12 hours. That's a bit excessive in my opinion. I just do a couple of hours. It's, if something's going to burn up or blow up or short, it's going to do it in a two-hour period. It's not going to take 12 hours to do it. So, you know, I guess it could. But um, for all intents and purposes, a couple of hours is plenty burn-in time for me. That's my opinion. So alright, uh, thanks for watching, like, share, and subscribe if you want to, and uh, we'll see you on the next video, and thanks for watching.